Okay guys, you will never believe me if I tell you that I've been trying to record this video for uh, at least 4 hours. But it's okay, okay? Enough ranting, let's do some 3D animation. Uh, I wanted to make this video because I made this animation uh, last week and I posted it on YouTube and somebody said, teach me this. Uh, and the animation it is in it itself is not really complicated. So, But even though I used some techniques that are not really well known of um, uh, beginners. But um, I'm going to take you step by step uh, through all the process and show you how, how actually easy it is to make some animation in Blender. Um, and for that we're just going to open a Blender. I've been trying to fix all these, pro these problems for the last four hours and uh, yeah it was frustrating but it's okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna go and open Blender and you'll see that I have already made two bouncing ball animations because I wanted to make this exercise with you so I, you can get the basics of animation in Blender and I already actually have recorded two videos from that but the audio was so bad that I just think it was not decent to, to keep those so we are going to make uh, a third one um so i'll just show you what we what i did um this this one was actually just 20 minutes ago so yeah this is what it looks like and honestly it's a shame that i can't show you the video because it was really well made and well explained but it's okay we can do it again because we've already done it twice let's do it uh, for the third time and yeah uh, and also you will um, notice that I have set up a, a timer here that's because I just don't want to waste more time doing uh, anything else but the animation so even the explanation I'll just try to make them as straightforward as possible so we don't really uh, waste any time okay so I'm just gonna go up and open a new blender file here and here this is uh, a default cube but I'm just going to delete it uh, because we want something that looks like a ball and for that we're just going to add a UV sphere and I'm just going to press oh let me just turn on uh, quickly this um, uh, the screencast key so you guys can see all the shortcuts I'm going to use because I use plenty of shortcuts um, I'm just going to press J to move it uh, upward here and I'm gonna select my camera and press O on my notepad so I can uh, uh, see what the camera sees and then I'll press this lock icon so we can lock the camera to view this way it's really easy to place the camera whatever you want and I'm just going to place it around here because as you can see I press one on my notepad to see where the front of the photographic view is and I want the camera to face that view so I'm just a few meters away from there so i'm just going to place it here and you can see this is our light and i'm just going to go to render view and place the light around uh, uh, okay let me just unlock this so the camera stays in place and i'll just place the light uh, around here so we can have a nice shadow here like we had on the last uh, animation so I'm just going to add a plane that would serve as the ground and I'll just press O to focus on it and then I'll just uh, go to edit mode and scale it like this just big enough to for the ball to bounce on it okay I think that's that's about it and uh, yeah let's just give this, this ball a little color um, I'll just give it uh, I'll just give it okay we have already done red and blue so this time I'll just give it a greenish color <laughs> okay uh, and I really hope this time the recording sounds good because this traumatized me this is this is the third time I'm doing this today so I hope it, it, it better look sound look and sound good okay so now about the animation this as you can see here is our timeline this is where we're going to have all our keyframes and um, 
for the animation we are going to i'm going to explain as we go some of the principles of animation that are going to be involved in this animation and the, mo the first one that we are going to see is called uh, the easings so there's there's two types of easing there's one that is called ease in and the second one is ease out so uh, when it's um, at the beginning of the, let me just show you, I'll, by, I'll show you by, by creating keyframes. So first I'm just going to create a keyframe here by clicking on uh, the, the ball and pressing I. So one thing, yeah, yeah, one thing that you need to know is that when I press I, it creates a keyframe, but you, we, we don't see a menu like we used to do in the previous versions of Blender. Because in the pre previous versions of Blender, um, when you press I, it would uh, pop up a menu here and ask you if you want to, to create a keyframe for either the location uh, or the scale or the rotation or the three, three of them at the same time. But now in this, these versions of Blender, it automatically creates a keyframe for those three channels. And it's okay because uh, that's actually how I create keyframes anyway. So, and we're going to need the, the location and the scale mainly. We don't really, we're not really going to uh, do anything with the rotation, but it's okay. You can create it an empty keyframe. It doesn't really matter right now. So yeah, so now that I created a keyframe here, uh, I'm just going to go five frames later, okay? And then I'll just move the ball, bring it uh, down here to the ground, as close to the floor as possible. And I don't want any clipping, so I'm just going to hold shift and move it slowly. So I have full control on what I'm doing, like around here. Perfect, that's almost no clipping. And I'll just press I again to create a keyframe. Okay, so now we can see that this is uh, what the the interpolation between the two keyframes is going to look like. There is almost no easing. There is a something that resembles an easing. That's because uh, by default, the the interpolation of the, the keyframes is set to Bezier. And what is Bezier? Well, Bezier, uh, I don't want to get into the details of uh, the graph editor here, but you, as you can see here, this is a Bezier curve. So basically, uh, you can see that there's a little curve curve here. Um, before before we we go down the slope, there is a little curvature here that is actually what we call the easing. So the ball slowly, but it, it happens really quickly. But it slowly starts to uh, to fall, and then it does its uh, its uh, its way down to the to the floor. And when it's about to hit the floor, it does the, again the same thing here, which is the ease out. Uh, and this is for the Bezier interpolation. But um, we can't really see it here because it's it's happening really fast. Okay. Uh, with the, if we really wanted to make it more uh, visible, we could use the graph editor to change it and also change a little bit uh, the, the the spacing. Uh, the timing sorry which is the the distance between the keyframes but oh, this animation is really small and very straightforward and easy so we don't really need to it doesn't really matter if whether it is the, the whether the interpolation is set to bezier or linear uh the constant interpolation in itself is mostly used when making complex animation like um when you're when you're first when you're on the first two steps of uh, animating a character and you want to see the poses, you don't want the interpolation between uh, each poses, uh, so you can just set it to constant, so all you see is uh, each pose that's happening throughout the time. For this animation, we don't need it. Uh, we can keep it, keep the interpolation to Bezier, and uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's how we're going to do the work. And I'll show you how we are going to make our 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 ease in and our ease out uh, uh, not more noticeable. So right now it's it's happening really fast, okay? But it's okay. And uh, we after the ball hits the ground, we want it to go back to to its uh, position uh, up in the air, like this, okay? So we have the first steps of the bounce ball. And right now our timeline is uh, 
set to was it was set to 250 frames but we can reduce it to to the length of our animation which is not going to be very long as you've seen on the animation the, the animation i made previously that i showed you at the beginning of the video but yeah so um so here right now we have the the ball that's bouncing it's it it looks somehow correct and if we if i re reduce the the timeline to this you would see that it actually does something like resembles that it's that looks like a bouncing uh, motion okay uh, but even though it looks off and i'll tell you why it looks off right now uh that's because uh there is no no ease uh, I and mean, there is as you can see here the ball the ball it, when it's falling right now uh it gains a lot of energy here okay and when it's going back up it needs to release that energy and w w the problem here is that it's going to normally it should uh get higher as it uh, releases that energy but the problem here we have is that we just duplicated this keyframe so it's going to stay at the same hey and that looks it looks like something is stopping it here at this at this uh, at this height here and that's one of the things that making that makes it look uh, off uh, another thing that makes it look uh, bad is all, obviously the the timing which is uh, not uh, ideal but it was just to show you about the easings and now i'm going to to introduce another another principle of animation which is called the squash and stretch so basically squash and stretch is a principle of animation that we can use to convey uh, the weight uh, the, and the density of uh, an object so as you can see here this ball would look more like uh, a table tennis ball or a or i don't know a ba a base baseball ball because it you can see that uh it's not really deforming that much when it's falling and when it's hitting the ground but a rubber ball on uh, on the other hand would change a little when it's uh, subjected to to speed and that's when we get the the sorry for all the noise it's really hot in here and i have to open the door so i don't suffocate in here so yeah there's a lot of noise out there i live in a really yeah really really noisy place but anyway so i was talking about um, the the squash and stretch so basically this ball if it was a robo ball uh when it's uh, getting uh, when it's falling from this height here and before it hits the ground it's going to gain a lot of speed and it basically it's at this point uh, before before the before the the impact it, this is uh, the its maximum speed here it reaches its maximum uh speed around here so when we get here i'm just going to press s and scale it on the z axis and stretch it a little bit so we can see that it's really affected by the speed and i'm just going to press i right and we're going to see that with the interpolation it's even going to start to 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 stretch it a little before that okay so as you can see here we can see now we we now have a little more information about the the density and the consistent of the ball we can know we, now we know that it's definitely not a ten, table tennis or ping pong ball so stretch and uh, squash go together so this time uh the ball i want it to squash after it uh, hits the ground it's going to to deform uh it's going to collapse on itself like this due to all the energy it's gained and uh all the energy that's going to happen from the the impact is going to make the ball uh, uh, crush itself like this and i'll just press i now that i have made my squash and uh, i'll just show you what the animation looks like now 
okay it's fast but it, it it's starting to look good right and after we've done the the squash uh, the the stretch sorry and the squash the bowl now has uh, stored a lot of energy typically a robo ball that's got that got wow that's really loud okay <laughs> These motorcycles are really loud. They should not be allowed to drive at these times. But anyway, uh, I was saying that when a ball uh, gets this shape, it's, it means that it has stored a lot of energy and it's about to release it. And normally when it releases it, it needs to go higher than the initial position it came with, right? And here's what we, what we, what we need to change about our animation. Uh, that, that's what I was talking about earlier. Right now, our animation uh, after the fall, after the impact with the ground, we get back to the same height, and this is wrong. So here, what we need to do is after we reach this height, I want to add a little bit of ease out, where I'll just uh, make this uh, ball go a little higher. And for that, I'm just going to make the animation last a little longer, and I'll just make it just uh, just a bit higher than the initial position here right and i'll just press i okay and now we can see it makes more sense now right okay and right before we we deal with the the end of the cycle here i want to change something that's also a little wrong here you can see that after the impact uh here the ball just uh, it goes from its uh, squash state to back back to its normal state and that's not exactly what would happen in in reality because the ball will gain some speed after the the squash here when it's releasing the, that energy uh it's going to stretch again like this uh let me show you a little oh sorry it's going to do it a little earlier here and this is it's going to stretch around here like this and as you can see here it, since it's a rubber ball when the energy hits the, when the ball hits the ground here with a certain force that force is going to hit the ground and go back up and that's when the ball is going to stretch again like very very subtly and then it's going to get back to its normal uh, state and then we have our little ease out here and i'm going to add a little ease in again let me explain why it's called ease in again because since this i want this to be a cycle before we we go back to this this uh this keyframe as you can see when i'm playing here at the end of it, it we start back to this initial keyframe okay and i don't want this to just stop here because you can see between this and this there is nothing so before that we, uh, before we hit this keyframe again, I want to add a little ease in here. And for that, I'm just going to create another keyframe around here, maybe even here, and I'll just make the ball start start to to get back to the initial position, not exactly to that position, but just few steps before that, so our eyes can do the interpolation for the rest. And normally now it's going to start to look a little better okay uh okay maybe this is too sorry i'm really hitting that mic i hope that doesn't sound bad okay so maybe that was too far let me just see how it looks right here okay now it looks better okay so and basically that's all of it that's all we had to do when it comes to the ball bouncing animation and yeah so yeah now we can uh how much time left okay we have 41 41 minutes left let's go to the the other animations uh but before that i i just have to go down to the i just have to go to the grocery store real quick and i'll i'll be back i'll be back i'll be back in a in a few few minutes okay guys i'm back from the grocery store and as you can see behind me it's, it's really dark now it's about uh it's almost uh, 10 p.m and yeah um we are just going to get back to the to the work 
and this time we're going to make the the, the advanced not the really advanced but uh, the cool animations okay and you can see that uh, i set the timer to 30 minutes because i was not here for a few minutes and but that doesn't really count but i don't want to spend one hour again here so 30 minutes is like the perfect in between uh yeah so this is the animation i made that uh made again some sort of attention on youtube and somebody asked me to explain how i made this so i'm not going to just explain how i made this um, we're actually going to make one a new one uh from scratch and uh, i'll cl quickly break down this animation and show you what is involved here and as you can see there is already some there is a normal tier here uh, and this is like just a chain of bones that I added and I parented this automatically to this mesh. And this, by the way, is the default cube that I just uh, extruded some some spikes, some faces from it. And uh, yeah, this is also just a cube. And basically, it's just animated. I just use uh, some shape keys to to give it this uh, this shape when it's uh, squashed. Uh, and apart from that, and I, and and then I just realized this, this was I didn't even need some some shape keys for this. I could have just used the scale uh, the scale uh, transform. But but anyway, uh, we're going to use shape keys anyway because you can if you can I don't know if you can see here, but there is some sort of smears on this animation, and that was done using shape keys here, as you can see here and yeah that's one of the use of shape keys and there is also one last thing and that's this right here which is uh a grease pencil yeah this is some grease pencil object uh this was made uh this was hand drawn so i just added a grease pencil object and i just uh it shows uh, a, a material that has the same color as as the the hammer and uh yeah i did the same for this effect here uh it's also a christmas lane if i just turn off this you can see that uh this is what it looks like and yeah so we're going to make something uh similar to this not exactly the same thing i don't i don't think we're going to need bones or maybe yeah just a few of them but yeah anyway let's just get to it and um, let me just uh, open a new blender file and yeah here we go oh so before i forget let me just turn back on the screencast keys and uh, yeah so i don't know exactly what we're going to animate but i just know that i i'm going to keep this default cube uh because this is the cube we're going to traumatize again we're going to hit it with something i don't know a baseball bat maybe uh or or cooking pan i don't know uh let's just let me just like shape it a little like this and move it uh, above the ground level which is uh, around here how about we cut it in half with a cut in uh, um yeah you know what let's just uh let's just uh let's do something let's just uh let's just place it uh, around here let me change the camera i did i'm just going to change the camera view as we did earlier i'm just going to place it here like around here okay uh and then we're going to so we can see things better can you just like come around here so we have a nice little perfect and then i'm just going to add a, pl a plane as we did for the others uh, and i'm going to scale it and if you're wondering why i'm scaling it on the in edit mode it's because i want to keep the this let me show you transforms I want to keep the the scale to, to one here. The ratio of the scale I want it to, to 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 all stay at one. And if you if you scale it on the in object mode, you can see that the scale is going to change. And to to keep it to bring it back to one, you will have to to do this to uh, what what was it? Okay, uh, it was Control A. You press Control A, and then you apply the scale on uh, yeah here. 
but it's it's actually simpler to just uh, scale it on on edit mode and uh, yeah we have some thing that start to look like a scene um i'm just going to give it some some color you know last time i gave i gave the the color to to the cube this time i'm just going to change the the color of the plane i'll, I'll make it uh, let's make it orange or whatever this color is this is not orange uh, color doesn't really matter let's not waste time you see why i always set a timer because i just keep wasting time on these stupid things okay green green is good okay okay so we have the colors of the two stuff you won't believe me if i tell you i want to change this color back to what it was <laughs> but no, it does like what i want to do okay all right now now we're done with the colors okay we have the cube and uh, i'm just going to add another object i don't know what it's going to be i want it i want to make it a sort of a baseball bat uh um how do you even call it in english is it baseball bat because i just translated the french for it i think it's uh uh yeah i checked it and it's 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 right it was i was right it's baseball bat uh okay not that it doesn't matter that much anyway so i'm just going to i'm just going to use uh, maybe a slight cylinder okay let me let me just try with a cylinder to make my baseball bat why is it looking like this uh okay i, I <laughs> that's because i turned on snap all right uh i'll just try to give it the shape of a baseball bat Okay, so let me just uh, go into edit mode and I'll just scale it uh, on the z-axis and scale it on the... Let me just scale it globally. No. Actually, yeah. See. This. Uh, right. And... Well, I guess I'm just going to go to face selection. I hope you guys can follow the shortcuts I'm using to do all these things I'm doing. And um, I'll try to... I, I forgot some of the, of the things I knew. Um, just uh, go here. Uh, okay, let me just some lookups here all right and then I'll turn on uh, this uh, which is a proportional editing so I can uh, influence uh, the rest of the the mesh just by scaling down this vertex this edges here uh, okay, the baseball bat does not really have to have a rounded top, even though it would look cooler. Um, to do that, I'll just have to, I'll have to add some more look at around here. And uh, I think I, I, okay, I, I know how to do that. This is what we're going to do. I'm just going to go this mode and I'll just give it the vertices here. And I'll just select this edge and I'll just... Uh, extrude and scale it like this okay and then I'll bring it turn off. I'll just turn off um, I'll turn off uh, proportional editing now I'll do it again I'm sure there is a more efficient way to do this but at the end of the day what's important is to get the job done and that's what we're doing right now all right we can keep it low poly it doesn't really matter uh right now i have many options to to close this gap i would like to have a nice topology so i'm just going to i'm just going to use a uh, uh, uh not poc faces a grid fill yeah sorry it was grid fill and um i don't know if this was good enough maybe 
Who is lower? Okay, this is not enough. But this should be, I think. Yeah, whatever. Um, this does it, does it? Okay, some, some of the, some of the, some of the, the edges don't have, the, don't have transversal edges, but yeah, we don't care, it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. So we have what looks like our baseball bat, and uh, I'm just going to finish off this part here. For that, I'm just going to add another look at around here. Okay, and then I'll go to face selection, and I'll let me just press that key here. And I think, um, okay, I can just add another one here, and I'll scale this one down like this, and I'll turn on. Proportional editing and I'll reduce influence and scale this one down as well. And I'll do, it. do the same for this one. Well, um, I don't know if it looks like a baseball bat, but I'll just scale this as well, and we don't normally. Yeah, okay, so I think we have enough geometry to make this deform uh, well when we add bones to it, and we're gonna beat the heck out of this cube. Okay, so I need to give this guy a nice color, um, and um, well, let's give it a very visible color, like uh, red reddish kinda yeah and this should do it i could do add some shade smooth and uh some um what do you call it again subsurface uh modifier but do we really want that do we really care i don't really care i don't know about you but yeah whatever so this is what it looks like with the shade smooth uh we can give it like this oh my food is burning let me just come back and go check that I won't stop the timer, it's at 16 minutes right now. We have to finish this before it ends. Otherwise, I'm just going to cut the video and we're not gonna do the rest. But yeah, I'll, I'll be back. Okay, we're good, we're good. Let's go now. Uh, so we have our, our baseball bat. And let me just uh, check something here real quick. Okay, uh, the scale is good. Uh, same, perfect. Okay, so I am going to rig it. For this, this one I'm going to rig it. And uh, here's the camera. Uh, look, I don't like how the camera is facing. Let's just bring it around here. Okay, I'll maybe add some additional lights later. Uh, but for now, let's just uh, let's just uh, rig the the the, the baseball bat. I mean, that's very really simple. Okay, I know beginners might think this is a little advanced. It it is a little bit, but just trust me on this one. It's it's not going to be too hard. Um, I don't know if I'm talking too loud on the mic, uh, but I hope you can hear me well without any pop sounds. So I'm just going to add uh, an armature single bone here. I uh, can't see it. it. Must be here. Okay, so I'll bring it around here and I'll just go here to object properties and um, I'll change the, not the, visibility, the viewport display and I'll put, it, I'll put it in front so we can see it anytime uh, it's behind an object. You can see it is, we can see it from uh, every angle, literally. Right? Yes, it's really useful when you're adding an armature to an object. So I'm just going top view and I'll just place it here. This way I know it's it's, uh, it's placed inside the baseball bat. Okay, perfect. Um, so we just need like three bones. So I'm just going to three or four actually. Let's just add four. Um, I'll just uh, press G. 
I'll just select the tip like not right now I just like the the head here and I'll just press J to bring it down a little and I'll press E and Z to construct it on the Z axis and extrude another bone here right I'll do the same again you know what I don't even have to do with again for this one I can just uh, scale it all the way up here and select this one and click subdivide so we already have so it automatically gives us the the, the third bone we wanted okay so uh, I just want this to go a little lower around here it's the same here here and I just want to check real quickly if uh, if the bone if the the object has enough geometry to deform well and uh, I think we're good to go I think we yeah I think it, it should do the job okay um, maybe maybe not enough but okay you know what just just to make just to be sure I'll just add a look at on each of these uh, sections okay but yeah apart from that we could okay okay now we now we have added our, our bones I think we won't make it in on time but it's okay I'll just add 30, 20 more minutes yeah you, if you're new to the channel this is normal this is actually normal this so it always it I never respect the times I said but uh yeah i'm just going to print this by selecting it and then shift select uh, this uh this armature now i'll press ctrl p and i'll show with automatic weights and that's it we're done and now you can see that we have uh oh so i did i, I really did well by adding more um, more lucas because it was really not going to deform well for the animation we need this it it's enough this is going to be enough okay so we have our baseball bat and it's armature now we can control it and animate it whichever way we want and yeah let's get to it now okay um so um this guy here we uh i know how i'm going to to hit it we're we're going to hit it uh on the on the, at the top here first and then maybe on the side and uh, that's not something I can just uh, animate like that with the, the basic transform like with scaling I can sure scale it on this axis to shrink it down or uh, on the on any of the axis actually right but uh, for the the goofy shape I'm looking for I can't do this with the basic transform and that's when we can start using shape keys okay so shape keys uh how what are they so basically the shape keys e is a way to save uh, a shape of the of this mesh uh, based on the, the basic uh, the the, ba the base shape of the mesh um this is really messed up a uh, really messed up explanation so it's it's almost like uh, a checkpoint okay so this is the base shape the normal shape of the the the, sh the mesh and i can just click here and uh this is actually the, the checkpoint this is the base shape okay and if i click on the plus button again now this is going to be a shape key that i can change okay but this won't affect the base mesh uh, which we which is going to to stay the same and once we have our created our key, uh, shape key we can uh, talk to sh uh, switch between the the shape keys the modified uh, shape and the base uh, shape the original shape by sliding this uh, this slider here the value okay uh i hope that makes sense to you but it's actually really easy to understand just know that this is a checkpoint okay and i can use uh, different uh, shapes i can add any shape i want and uh, once i want to get back to the normal shape i can just 
I just need to bring this value back to zero. Right now, there's nothing's happening because we have not modified the shape key yet. And to do that, all we have to do is just click here on the shape key, on the yeah on the shape key we've just created, and I'll just uh, rename it uh, top hit, and uh, I'll just uh, come here, click on the the mesh, and go to edit mode. Okay, now we're in edit mode. All I am going to do is I'm going to edit the mesh accordingly. And uh, for that, I okay, I, and I just realized we need loop cuts. Um, I don't think adding loop cuts to a shape key is a shape key is a is a good practice. Okay, I usually don't do that, but uh, let's just see what it what's going to look like. Um, let me just uh, check. Okay, it's doing it properly, but uh, but I prefer to have the I prefer to have the loop cuts uh, before. Okay, it just had added it <laughs> for some reason. Uh, okay, I just, just learned something new. Uh, right, so we are just going to start over the process. Okay, I'm just going to go back here, and now I'm going to create my shape key. So, I'm just going to select these two. I'll turn the proportional editing on by pressing O or just clicking here. And I'll select these two and I'll just place them. Uh, okay, let me just do this. I just wanted to have the, the same shape as the bat. And for that, I think we need to do something like this. Right? And then I'll hit it with the bat, and it's going to have this weird shape. And I like it to also. Uh, okay, let's take all this, and I like it to to squash a little. This, like this, S on the X axis, and on the Y axis. Okay, sorry, S on the Y axis. And then uh, SZ. Okay, I'm. I think I'm starting to mess everything up. This is not what we originally wanted, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> I messed everything up. <laughs> is this what we wanted? Nah, this is not what we wanted. It was good the way it was before. Okay, never mind. Let's leave it like this. Okay, let's keep it simple. Okay, and then I'll I'll, I'll create another keyframe, which I'm going to to do here when I'm going to hit it on the side. I want it to to bend like this. Okay, let me show you. Um, oh, you know what? I don't even need a shape key for that to make it bend like that. I can just uh, add a modifier, uh, a deform modifier. Should could do should could do that deform. Simple deform modifier, and uh, I'll just uh, set it to bend. I'll shift the axis. Yeah, I want it to bend like this when I'm going to hit it. And uh, yeah, basically this is about what I want to do. Okay, I think I'm going to yeah. And then once I want to bend it, I'll just animate this. Uh, I'll just keyframe this this value here. Okay. All right. Perfect. I think we're good to go now. Uh, maybe I should save this so we can uh, avoid losing it. And I'll just add 30 more minutes because we only have four minutes left on the timer. Okay. I just had an idea, and I think I'm just going to. Mod I, I, as you can see, I modified the the shape here a little bit, and I'm just uh, once I hit it, I want it to be bloat it a little bit like this here around here and i definitely should have added more okay my foot is burning okay let me come back <laughs> okay i decided just to set back the timer to one hour because i remember last time i said i would do something in less than an hour it took three hours so if i wanted to be done in 30 minutes if i say 30 minutes i should put an hour it's 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 just it would it, it would make more sense okay um, so yeah, I just said I wanted to, to be a little bloated, and then my foot started burning. 
so yeah i'm just going to add some deformations around here and yeah i i hope it's going to look good on, after i animate it because if it's if it's just like uh really uh straight all the time and um uh, has a regular shape it's just going to look boring what makes it goofy is um, these curves and all these uh, little imperfections. So let's just add a bit of those. Alright. So, yeah, I think uh, this should do it. Okay. Okay, let's just see how it look like. Okay, that's not actually the final camera we're going to use. I might change it again and put it somewhere around here so we can see better. Okay, um, so we have this shape key and we also have um, uh, the deformation on the this axis and actually also I'm going to hit it on this uh, this uh, side here I'm gonna add some grease pencil effect uh, here like on the anime like a shock wave here and then I'll propel it here throw it away on this on this side all right uh, so let's put it back to zero and uh, for the beginning of the animation we're gonna start with uh, the baseball bat and I'm going to have it uh, do some little tricks some some little anticipation like we seen with the, the hammer uh, I'm going to have it do some rotations uh, I don't know on which axis I want it to do some rotations not this one definitely maybe like these just a little bit of warm-up okay the first let's let's do it uh, let's make it do some rotations uh, on this axis and then uh, I'll, I'll do this on this uh, on this this uh, axis on this uh, X axis on the Y axis sorry not Y axis actually the axis but uh, first I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis then on the Z axis for the last shot okay first let's start with uh, the beginning and uh, as you can see I can scale it like I did for the for the hammer and I'm definitely going to scale it because it looks even funnier and so yeah let's start now I'm just going to to select uh, all the bones and create a keyframe by pressing I like we did uh, earlier and as I told you it creates a keyframe for not only all the bones but all their transforms so it yeah it creates a lot of keyframes if you want want if you don't want to create keyframes for all these channels which which are the, um, the rotation the location and uh, the scale you can set it here in the preferences i think you can do that here i don't know exactly where it is because i i don't really care about uh, it must be here in key no, no so what, what am i saying now uh what what was it called again the it's key i forgot what there is a name for the 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 the, the, the type of channels you want to, to animate when making a when making an animation um but i really i really don't know what it, its name is anymore yeah so uh anyway let's do our animation so we've created our first keyframe and uh we're going to add a little bit of uh, of uh, anticipation and for that i'm just going to make it uh ha i'll maybe just do the same thing with it for the for the for the helmer i'll just have it uh, go a little bit up here behind and uh, bend like this and uh so I just press a and i let me see how it looks like 
and uh, yeah I'll, 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 I won't do exactly the same thing as uh, the for the hammer but something that looks like it so I'm just gonna have it do this and so here's the anticipation let's hold this let's hold it uh, for some frames like this okay you know what it's just a uh, Let's make it uh, less longer. Uh, for that, I want this to be a very extreme pose, like something like this. Like this, and uh, in between, I'm just going to add uh, an in-between frame. Okay, let me just uh, select. Uh, let me just delete this. Uh, I just want to check. Now I want this to happen really quickly. And this and this. Actually, I want this to happen quickly, and then I'll I'll ease it out with with a keyframe. It's going to be the most extreme around here. For these two, I want it to happen really quickly. So I'll just make animate it in on twos here. And then I'll, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, something like this. Okay. And after here, I'm just going to add one more. Where I'll make it bend a little more, even a little more here this right and then I'll bring back the initial state this is called an overshoot and uh, it's one of the principles of animation uh, but this one is oh, I, I did really bad okay it it's it, it doesn't look right why because this is this motion is really slow and uh, it's not fast enough to create something that okay you know what we don't need an overshoot here because this motion is too slow to to create an overshoot so we can just keep it like this and hold it for a few frames uh, for that i'll just uh, duplicate the, the keyframe here this hold it I'll hold it here. That's, too, that's a little too much. And then I'll just accelerate and make a, a huge rotation. But I scale it because if I just do the rotation, it's just going to touch the ground and everything. <laughs> so I'll just uh, I'll just bring it up here and do the bring it even higher maybe. And do the rotation. Maybe let's get it down here. How about this? Uh, maybe I'll need I'll need it to to bend a little harder. Oh, that sounded really weird. Bend a little more. Let's <laughs> see. My God. <laughs> Whatever. Uh. Okay. And then. Uh, and then let's let's keep the rotation here. Maybe I shouldn't have made it bend like that. Okay. 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 This is starting to look good. I just need to make it happen faster. Like uh, I'm just going to put these on twos, and then uh, let's finish the rotation. What does it look like? Yeah, it's 
Sorry, no look interesting. How much time do we have left? 49. Okay. I'll just have it uh, do this. Um, and then uh, I'll do it again. I'll have it uh, slowly settle back the top here. And I'll have it do a little slow motion here. Right here. See? Just a little one. Um, this is not the perfect technique to have a slow motion. And there is a better way to have one. Uh, but since we don't really care about that on this video, we're just going to deal, make do with this one. But basically, this is the slow motion we we're gonna have for this animation, and then I'll make it go really, really quick after the slow motion here. Just two frames after it. I wanted to do this to be at this position real quick. See. And then here I'm going to add some some, uh, some smears later with the help of uh, uh, shape keys. See how it looks like all over. Yeah, this is something I. But the problem is that it looks like a sausage with this color. Maybe I'll change the color later. <laughs> and I'll remove the the shade smooth. Because it really looks like some sausage or something even. Okay, you know what? Let's let's, let's change the color. I I, I I think this should this this is kind of dangerous to keep it. Just this color. <laughs> let's just change the color. <laughs> I'll make it blue. Okay, there is no blue sausage. <laughs> okay, let's give it a blue color. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, so we we are. We have something that's starting to look really good here. So, with up, then it gets really big. Then uh, here we're gonna have a slow motion here. Uh, but I'm going to move the keyframe a little bit back here. And uh, here I'm going to scale it. I'm going to scale it and make it like extremely big. No, not like this. Like this maybe? No, this is this. This doesn't look right. Okay, uh, I think the best way to scale it is here, as it's settling from the rotation. No, it was not. Oh, I get it. I get it. Why? I get why. Okay. Um, this is this is why. This is, this is because it's interpolating the the scale from here, but we don't want that. Um, this is. Okay. Um, let me just do something. Like adding a. Okay, the scale is going to happen really quickly here. Like two frames later, I'm just going to turn it here. And uh, oh, wait, hold. Scale it here. Right. interesting bro this is going to be a massive hit but yeah deserves it um there is a little bit too aggressive uh, wait hold on sorry i made a mistake oh it's like all the bones to move the keyframes and um This is how we're going to go about it. Mm. 
<laughs> this is going to be a, like a super aggressive hit. I'll make it hit it so hard that uh, the tip of the, the bat is going to bend on top of the, the cube and then bounce back. And we'll get the overshoot I would promised. Okay, now we've done this. The next next move needs to happen really quickly. And so we don't need to worry about timing and all that. We're just going to hit it like this. It's really, really hard. This is the next frame. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to add a marker so we know uh, when to animate the, the, the box. Uh, oh, sorry. I already added a marker. And I'll just click rename marker and I'll, I'll name it uh, contact. With bat. Okay. Okay, you can see that this there is uh, this doesn't happen quick enough. That's because uh, I thought it would be better to. Wow! Yeah, now is now we're talking. Blum. Okay, and then after this this frame, it's the next frame is going to happen just after it. One frame after it, and it's going to be the most aggressive frame. Oh, I think I messed up, but it's okay. I'm, since I have not animated this object later, I can adjust the position. But I, I, I kind of messed up. It's bent on one axis a little, but it's okay. It's okay. We can do with that. All right. So um, can I scale it down? Do I need to scale it down? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I need to. Do we? Do we need to scale it down? Would it look good? I don't think so. But yeah, let's keep it like this. And uh, yeah, let's just see how it looks like. Um, Okay, let's see how it looks like. Like really aggressive. Why why is it slow like this? I don't want it to be slow. Oh, that's because the the spacing is bad. Because the, the two two keyframes here are really close to each other. The two frames here. This one and this one is really close. Um and maybe this one needs to be more aggressive. This maybe yeah something like this but yo this making is more suspicious that's because a baseball bat would not bend like this but ah uh, i don't know how this animation is going to look like at the end but please guys this is a baseball bat okay don't just don't don't go out there and imagine things it's it's only in your mind okay uh all right let me just go check on the food and i'll be back okay guys plans have changed uh, uh my food is finished uh this is my dinner uh and i'm going to continue what we are doing right now until the the uh, the food the cool cools off because it's really hot right now and i don't want to eat it like this but i'm going to eat dinner first and then we're going to finish the animation so we are going to reset the timer again yay but yeah, so far we, we've done a lot of uh, good progress, so we're almost done with the animation. Then all it is going to be left to do would be um, adding the smears and uh, and a little effects with Christmas song. Um, so yeah, uh, we have the, the overshoot that we're going to add. And it's going to happen uh, just one instant after the hit was done. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to make it overshoot like this. 
okay first it's going to keep the same position and then uh, with the energy that uh, this uh, tip here is going to bring back it's going to make this uh, the rest of the bat go back up okay uh, that's what I'm trying to do and I'll just see how it looks like uh, uh, for that I need to make it happen really quickly then like right after here I need to start moving the rest of the bat up like this There's a really weird sound coming from outside. Um, I don't know if this looks good or as good as I wanted it. Um, maybe, maybe, yeah. Okay. Let's just uh, test the uh, the the shape key real quickly and see if it's going to look any good. Uh, yeah, there is some potential. I'm just going to have it uh, do a little slow mo when it's going back to its uh, to its initial initial position. Sorry. Um, and for that, I'm just going to have it. Uh, do this uh, like this, settle back up like this. Hi, let's see how it looks like. Um, no, around here, yeah, something like this. Okay. Um, and then uh, we're gonna go, we're going uh, straight with the next hit, which is going to happen on the side. Boom. Like this, this, hit, settle back up, and uh, then I'll just have it uh, scale back down like this start another rotation okay i know why it, the rotations look bad just because i am doing it on the viewport without a you see now it's going to change the axis of its rotation and from here i wanted to rotate uh, let me let me just see how we're going to approach it okay so i'm just going i want it to be quick though so i'll just rotate it on the, the y-axis maybe slowly just a bit slowly why does it sound like it's raining water is pouring from somewhere um that's crazy Okay, so I'll slowly start, have it uh, start to rotate on this axis. Um, that looks bad. That's because I need to keep... I need to... Sorry, I need to keep... I need to keep rotating it uh, here. Okay, so it just doesn't look like really mechanical. Right? You see? So it looks like... Like it's progressively changing its axis and the two frames later I'll just uh, I'll just uh, keep moving it here okay and I'll have it do its rotation on the Z axis now oh no sorry I I forgot to create a keyframe before going into it but uh, by the way, if you go to into edit mode without creating the keyframe, it's going to reset the keyframe. So just 
Be careful. Uh, had I? Yeah, I had, but it had removed it. Okay, I'm gonna have it slowly do this. And then it's going to accelerate. Um, okay, but before that, let's uh, make sure it's completely on the on the the, the x-axis like this and yeah let's, uh, let's create another keyframe oh, what does it look like from here um, okay um yeah let's keep the rotation happening um okay let's see how it looks like i'll create i'll, I'll keep rotating until i have something interesting It's happening really quickly and I don't want that. Let me just look it up uh, from, from here. Let's pick it up from here. Um, that's that song that looked really mechanical here. 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 Between here and here. This change between here and here looks uh, off. I might know how to change that. But yeah, let's see. I don't think it's going to do much, but let's see. Um, no. No, that's, that's, that's actually not the problem. Problem is that this is not... It's like abruptly changing from this axis to this one, you see. Uh, or maybe it's happening too quickly. Oh, I need to select all the keyframes where I can move it. Yeah, I prefer this. Okay, so I'm just gonna go and eat food and I'll be back in a few seconds or minutes. Okay guys, welcome back. We are currently the day after yesterday because I couldn't finish it last night because it got really late and I got tired. Uh, so I decided to postpone it until today. So let's just uh, take uh, pick it up, pick it back up from where we left, up, left on yesterday, which is... Uh, on the second rotation so let's just finish it up real quick before i go to work because i gotta stop in like um one hour or so actually one hour so yeah let's just uh do this quickly and um so you guys can see can see how i add um the, the the smears with the with the shape piece later uh and i also want the the i want the the bat to just let me just bring the mic a little higher like this uh, i want the bat to just to go a little lower here right um Is. Let me see how it looks like. Yeah, now this is going to be the final swing when it's, when it starts to to get at the level of the cube. I'm gonna add a little slow mo at the end as well, around here, right after this one. Let me just bring it down a little and then uh, let's rotate it one last time. 
and let's bend it like this. see what it looks like yeah, and here between here and here I want to slow mo before we hit it with all the strength we can have okay what did it look like yeah this looks interesting And then the impact. Oh, um, I need to rotate it on the x axis as well so it catches the, the cube. Uh, and uh, yeah, now we have our impact. Let's see how it looks like. So, more than. Oh, no, that was bad. <laughs> Okay, I know why I did that. That's because it it rotated on the on the wrong axis. Not on the wrong axis, but the wrong way. I want this rotation to go this way. Like this. Okay. It's going the other way. Um, maybe I'm rotating on the wrong. No, this wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> okay, let's just add it progressively, maybe. Just move these keyframes closer because I want it to happen really very fast. And then, then the impact. And the next, the next here, yes, this next frame here will have the impact right about here. Okay, how does it look like now? yeah and from here to here i want this to slowly keep pushing toward the 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 cube so i'll put more so i'll emphasize the the impact and then after it's done here i'll i'll just uh make the, the cube just fly away from here like two like this it's gonna go it's gonna go like slowly away first it gets hit on the top it deforms then on the side and then here it's gonna move slowly like this then and then i'll add some grease pencil effect and we can call it a day after that Okay, yeah, basically that's 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 the that's the plan. Okay, after after it does that, it needs to just the, the frame after that it needs to somewhere around here. Um, just give it back its uh its original shape or the like that and then after that it's going to keep moving just very slowly so it doesn't look like it it comes to a to a stop okay let's see how it looks like uh something looked weird here Okay, it's a little wiggle of the tip here. 
but it's okay. I'm gonna sh and I'm gonna add a second camera that's going to film this uh, this shot from a different angle, uh, probably around from this angle here. I'll place another camera here. After this one, the second camera is going to going to shoot from here. Maybe even here is better. Yeah, so we can see the action and the impact here. Okay, perfect. I think we are done with the with the, the, the baseball pad uh, and now I want to animate the, the cube um, and for that I am going to select it and we already have set up one of our key uh, shape keys uh, I know the contact happens here but there yeah um, so I'm just going to create a keyframe before that just so the initial state of the cube is uh, saved like this. I could create it somewhere here as well, but uh, same thing. I just it's just so the first keyframe, which is going to be uh, from the shape key, and uh, I'll just make the cube shake a little. Uh, and I don't want those first the first keyframe the first state of the 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 cube to be that otherwise if we if i just if i didn't create a keyframe before this uh, this hit this is this would be our our first keyframe this not exact this we won't have this but any anything i would do to to this cube like the, if i brought it up here and then created a keyframe this would be the first the initial state and that's why I created a keyframe before that. So we have uh, this rest uh, pose and then it gets hit. And here I'm going to going to OK, I also need to create a keyframe here before. Like one frame before I'll hover here and press I when the value is at zero. And then after that, after it gets hit, I'm gonna put the slider all the way up to one and then press I again to create a keyframe. Or you can just click on this icon, right? And now, and now you can see that. Can you see how, how good it looks now with the animation? And yeah. And then after this, here I'm gonna create another marker. Marker, rename marker. I'll, I'll just name it side contact. Okay. And I'm just going to make sure it starts where the first contact is at. It's around here. Okay. And then uh, from there, I'll just go here to my modifier and i'll do, i'll just do the same thing i did with the shape keys uh, one frame before i'll create a keyframe here on this value the angle value and one frame after since this is going very slowly i can go all the way here and uh and add it slowly like this yeah i think this oh no not all of them like around here but a little before that then here here i'll just create another marker here rename it Fly okay, let me just see how it looks like. First, it gets hit. Then, okay. Um, I don't, I don't want this to be this slow, so I'm just going to to delete this keyframe. I want this to happen quick, quicker. Like, 
maybe even quicker than this like right when it gets hit and then i'll slowly animate its movement the the object movement on the x-axis like it's slowly going to move uh, with the bat like this up until here and then it's gonna get thrown off yeah this looks more like it okay and then uh, right before that i'm gonna create a keyframe here on the on the for the box on for this uh, location actually i'll create the keyframe right to the contact and then uh, i'll just see how many frames it's going to last for it's this much uh, and I'll just uh, animate it, make it move alongside the bat. It's slowly around here, like this. So this is how it goes. Okay. Um, I want the motion to be linear, so I'll just set it to linear, so it doesn't, so it doesn't have the ease in and the ease out that we. It was a slightly easing it uh, at the beginning and that's why it was um, there was a sort of offset with the the bass movement and or maybe I'll just make it move not too far and then here I'll just uh, animate it out of the screen just create another keyframe uh, just move it way away from here and uh, yeah I'll just create a keyframe and normally yeah we well it it happened really quickly so okay uh, maybe I'll add some some uh, some smears with crispit so so we can see clearly what's happening okay let's see how it all looks like uh, this is the length of our animation now the animation is done pretty much and uh, yeah some smears will be needed around here so we understand where the where the the thing went or maybe I just Maybe I'll just uh, animate it. No, this is too close. Like, let's see. Here. Oh, it's the same. Yeah, no way. No, no worries. It's okay. Um. Okay. Uh. So I'm just gonna add the second camera, as I promised. And for that, I'll just create a marker here. And I'll just bind uh, this uh, marker, this camera to this marker. So right now, as long as this uh, this marker, as long as this camera is uh, bind to this marker, this is our active camera. And when I'll add another camera here, I'll create another marker and bind it to it, so it will take over and become the new active camera. So I want that to happen here, around here when the, the 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 bat is preparing for the next hit and uh, i'll just uh, create this marker here and i'll add a new camera um where are they here again right here uh well okay i'll just uh, set it to active camera sorry and i'll place it uh, um somewhere here yeah i think somewhere here should do the job like this and uh, i just uh, click on uh, bind camera to marker and now this second camera is here and this is how it's gonna go uh first this camera then this camera change it and then yeah uh, that's pretty much how it goes um, okay, so now let's add the, the small effects like uh, all the smears and uh, then the grease pencil effect. 
So first for the smears we're going to go to this uh, this bat and we're going to create shape, shape keys and uh, for that I need to uh, I don't know if this camera is uh, if this the position of this camera is good enough um, and I also want to animate this camera because I want to when the when the bat is gets uh, gets uh, this big I want uh, the camera to zoom out so we can see see it better uh, for that I can change I could animate the focal length but I just want to see how it's going to look like okay that could look good okay I like the deformation it it has uh, I could also just make the camera move a little backward but um, I'm not sure this is going to look like I want it uh, it's okay I'm just going to animate the focal length and let me just see if we're going to have all this on frame uh, you know what let's just by default make the camera move like a little backwards so we can see all of it and yeah okay so this is by default uh, the state of the camera and um, I'm just going to to start to uh, here um, here I'm gonna create a keyframe here for the focal length and when it gets big like this I want to to move it back like this, make it Oh no that doesn't look like I want it. <laughs> That's not the effect I wanted. Um Okay maybe I should anticipate like this so the effect is does not happen at the same time. Yeah, this is more like it. I don't know if we can still see everything in the frame. Uh, yeah, this part is left off. What will it look like after the render? Um, because I want to add some, some, uh, some smears later. I'll just make it way bigger um, so I just zoom it out as, as much as I can so we can get all the bat on the frame yeah this is more like it maybe I want this to happen earlier so we have time to focus on the, the action. Maybe closer here. Yeah, this is this is more like what I want. Um, I don't know how how it's just gonna look here. Okay. Uh, I'm hesitating, but yeah, I think. This is about it. How about I bring it down here? Yeah, yeah, I prefer this. Okay, then we're going to move to this one. And for this one, I'm just going to... I'm not gonna going to animate this one. I'm just changing the focal length so we can see everything. Okay, this this looks decent. Um, I would like to have, add some some shake to the camera. Uh, I could do that with uh, uh, what is called again with a noise modifier using the the 
the graph editor I believe somewhere here later uh, but I could also wait until I'm done and use it uh, do it direct directly on with Davinci Resolve so I think that's the way I'm gonna go I'm shooting um, let me just turn my camera on and uh, yeah now now we can add the, the shape keys for the smears okay so for the shape keys i'm just going to select this and decide which frames i'm going to add them on um this is pretty small so it's pretty slow sorry so we don't need any any smears here but around here i'm going to add some of it so what I'm going to do is create shape keys like we did previously. I'll just name it smears one. And um, between here and here, there is a fast motion. So I'm just going to create a keyframe here. Uh, okay, first I need to create the key, the, the shape key. So I'm just going to. Okay, there is something I need to do, which is turn on this, so we can see the um, the the shape of this uh, the deformation in the edit mode. So just turn it on, so you so it doesn't reset the the position of the bat. And now here I'm gonna create a shape before I can animate it. So I'm just going to select this uh, this edge I'll turn off professional editing I can turn it on and just keep it really low and yeah I can just start deforming the, the bat from here uh, maybe using the the dot the vertex is going to be going to look better uh, and yeah, this is how, how I'm going to create the, the smears. Just create a small smear here. Something like this should should do should do the job. And now you when I put the slider to one you can see that I can have the smears. Okay, so just at uh, this frame I'm gonna create a keyframe. And one frame later, I'll just put the slider to one. And uh, I can keep it here. And around around here, I'm gonna bring it back to zero. Did I create a keyframe? Okay. I'm just going to check quickly what's looking like. Oh, it's looking, it's looking really good. Okay. Uh, yeah, we need we need another one here. Uh, let me just let me just check again. Okay, this was perfect. Then about here, right before it hits it here and here. Uh, I'm just going to create another another shape key here. I'll just name it Smears Two. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it happens really quickly. It's between here and here, it's right before the impact. Um, so I'll just, I'll just do the same. I'll just go when the the bat has already done the impact, and uh, I'll just uh, create my keyframe, my uh, sorry, my shape key. And uh, yeah, same thing. I'm just going to grab some some vertices and bring them up here can you you can notice that the the shape the of the smears depends a lot on the position of the camera but yeah so it's crucial that you choose very really at the beginning where you're going to position the camera that's why I was so hesitating so much about where I want the camera to be and um, I think this was a good choice uh, even though I okay well, out here I can also now this, this wouldn't look good but I can just 
make it uh, move somewhere on here. Uh, yeah, how, how does it look to the camera here? Uh, only one way to know. Let's just test it out. Okay, I think this this, this would look good. Okay, so about here we don't I'm just going to create a keyframe here and then at the impact I'm gonna create I'm just going to bring the sliders one and uh create another keyframe uh, and now let's see let's see how oh no that looked really bad okay oh uh, that's because I forgot to to remove it after the impact sorry okay let's try again um, yeah, it kind of looks good, not perfect, but it gets the job done. So, okay, let's move to this one. There is a lot of key, f uh, a lot of smears to add on this one. Um, first here, I could even use the same smears we already made. Uh, let me just check if it's going to look. Oh, it's actually looking good. Um, okay. Um, um, how fast does it go? Um, okay, this. Okay, here. Here is. It's not too fast. The thing is, it's not rotating fast enough for me to add smears. But I'll just find a way to fit them here. Uh, so here I'm just going to Okay, this is going to be confusing because uh, If I create a keyframe right now here for this mirror, it's going to interpolate between the last state of the Okay, it's okay. It was zero anyway, so Let me just create another There is no Need to worry about it And about here. I'm just going to put it to one Like this and here I'm going to put it back to zero. Okay. Yeah, something like this. This looks really cool. I'll do it twice. Like right before the last rotation here. Okay, for this time this time I will use this one. Uh so same thing I'll create a keyframe. Two frames later I'll create another one. Maybe not that full value somewhere around here and then when it gets here I'll bring it back to zero okay let's see how it looks like this look yeah it looks really good it's looking really good okay we have our smears uh, so we're done with the smears um photo box we don't need to add any I'll just do that with uh, this grease pencil um, but it's going to be complicated to plug in the tablet here because I'm. Okay, I'm just going to put it here. Okay, you know what? Before that, let me just add the grease pencil object and show you how to set it up. Um, let me just go to back to object mode and I'll just press. Oh, I forgot to turn on the screencast this time, so we might have missed some some of the. Uh, the shortcut I used, yeah, but it's okay. Uh, let me just uh, create. Let me just add a grease pencil object, and um, I'll choose a blank object. And yeah, now I can just go into draw mode and and draw anything I want. Oh, sorry, draw mode here. Okay, so let me just plug in my tablet, and um, I'll be back in a few seconds. Okay, I have plugged in the tablet and. Uh, we should be ready to go. Oh, first I need to open the app. Sorry. Okay, I am all set now. We can we can start doing the, the grease pencil stuff. Uh, okay. So for the grease pencil, I am just going to use the base brushes available here, and um, um, I might add some more some more. Uh, oh, my tablet is begging. I might add some more smears if. I judge it's necessary, but I don't think we need any more. Just uh, for the box, maybe. 
Uh, and apart from that, uh, yeah, let's just create some new materials. And I'll just make one that has the same color as the the the, the thing, what it's called again, the box. And I'll set it to fill. So, so it's going to... Let me just choose the same color here. Not exactly the same color, but it, it would it would do, do the job. And what I like to do is to add um to add uh, uh what what was it again a tint a glow it was a glow effect I add a glow effect so it really makes it pop out and uh, yeah I think we're we're good to go okay my tablet just froze let me just plug it in plug it back in. Please tell me it's gonna work. Okay, I need to close this. Okay, it's working again. Okay, so I'll just say I'm gonna add the, the smears now. Uh, so we have our material here, and this is the only moment I'll need another smear. It's right here. Oh yeah, but before the smear, I need uh, to add the blow. Once it takes the blow here, I'm gonna add some effect here. Uh, oh, for that I need a different color. Oh, my tablet doesn't really like what I'm doing. Right now it's bugging. But it's okay, we're, we're gonna get through it. Uh, I want it to be kind of uh, bluish. Not too blue, kind of close to white. Okay, my my mouse and the tablet are really not enjoying what I'm doing right now. Um, okay, I might just unplug the camera so I can have the mouse and the tablet at the same time. Okay, we don't have the camera anymore, but it should be working now. Um, I'm just going to... Oh god, what is this again? Okay, okay we go, we go. Okay, so I'm just going to, to start animating. Um, I'm going to create a keyframe, because you can see that the first keyframe was created automatically when I added the crisp pencil object. But I want uh, the keyframe to be here. After the, the bat hits the, the box. And right before it uh, gets thrown off, I'm just going to add a little blow here. Happening really quickly, so I'm just going to create a keyframe. Oh, I forgot to totally tell you about layers. So for this one, we only need one one layer is enough. It's gonna get the job done. And this is the kind of glow I'm gonna add. And I don't know why this material has. It. Okay, that's because I enabled the strokes. Okay. Oh my God, is the tablet bugging again? It is. Okay, I ready. I'm gonna have a hard time doing this. Um, okay, this should be good now. Let's just finish what we started. Um, so this is not exactly what I wanted. So now we're going... I'm gonna say here because uh, the render view is making my tablet go crazy. This is not exactly the kind of flow we want. I want it to be really big around here. Um, after it gets hit here, okay. And as you can see, I can just go into edit mode and okay. Let me turn back this on so you can see and uh, move the, the strokes I've already drawn. One of the cool things of Chris Pencil. Uh, actually, I want it to happen somewhere here. Because it's happening too early. Yeah. Um, maybe a little earlier here. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna create the next frame. And I'm gonna turn on onion skinning so I can see previous frame. And uh, I assume this is going to just get a bit smaller. Uh, 
Okay, not like this. Okay, this is looking <laughs> really bad. But I think you just get the idea. Um, I'm having a really hard time doing this. to happen quicker and earlier um, and then I'll just It is not going as I wanted it. I even filming. Yeah. And as you can see, if you hold shift, you can have more control over the strokes you're making. And this is not. It's not exactly what I wanted, but okay. I think you you just get the idea. <laughs> okay, I think here I'm just going to make it. for two frames okay looks nothing like what I thought it would look like um, it looks off not gonna lie yeah but I think how much time do I have? I only have 15 minutes left it back from the beginning and see how it looks like okay the thing is it needs to slowly keep getting bigger around here maybe I should have looked at some references Okay, this is definitely not looking really good. But I mean, you get the idea, that's all. My errors. Uh, okay, I'm just going to plug back my mouse in. And also the camera. Because I think we, we're done here. Um, and let me just show you how to render this. Okay, I'm not really satisfied with how the how the blow looks. It could look better than this, but I don't have much time to fix it. So overall, the animation looks cool. We have the spears, we have the, the 2D effect. Okay, this, the blow just is so random um, but unfortunately I don't have enough time to fix it so we're just gonna have to deal with it yeah oh yeah I forgot about the, the smears of the 
of the the box you can add that while we're at it not sure if it's going to save the day but right after here I'm gonna just switch this to this material let me go back here before we start the game uh, right here And I'm just going to Okay, let's see how it looks like Okay, that should do it uh, Okay, let's see how it looks like yeah, this is this is perfect. Okay, I think we can call it a day. Now I'll just show you how to how to how to render this. Uh, now we're done animating. All we need to do is just go to this here, this output here, and uh, before that we need to go to view layer and enable Z passes so we can render the grease pencil objects properly. Um, and after that, uh, you can just go to the output uh, tab and just select here where we want the the the, 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 the final uh, animation to be rendered at. We can shoot the file format here. I uh, usually go to, with the uh, FFmpeg view, and then for the encoder, I'll just choose uh, MP4. And then after that, yeah, after that we're done. All we have to do is just uh, go here to render and click render animation. We'll just press Control F12, and that's it. Okay, um, so we're done with this animation. I hope you learned a thing or two about uh, the, how to make uh, how to enhance your animation and make it look good using uh, some of the grease pencil effects and um, the shape keys to add smears and yeah i hope you you like this video and i'll just see you next time on the next one okay bye